I haven't worn sweats out in public since my uh, 20s. Are you ready to rock? <laughs> Going to one of the concerts is like a pop quiz, man. It's like, and you people over here, how are you feeling? <laughs> what are you drinking? What do you smoke? It's like with, with the questions, man. Like, <laughs> fucking play it. <laughs> Ah, it's supposed to make you feel good about being there. <laughs> it's it's just it's like ridiculous banter that means nothing at all. It's just <laughs> buying time. If anybody ever views this, I just want to put it in perspective that we're talking about Kiss. Like we've said them. I don't know that we've actually said the band Kiss. So in case there's any questions. You gotta get yes, something. We're talking back. <laughs> I mean Charlie made it pretty clear, but I, I better say something. <laughs> so more specifically, when we were kind of setting up topics, I had put in a topic because Charlie and I in, in on some level or another are or were Kiss fans, and we know that Grundy and Danny do not like Kiss. And so I put in the topic why Danny and Grundy are wrong about Kiss, and then followed up the next day by I see an entry in there why, what was it? Why Bill is a butt. Why, well, <laughs> no, that, that's, that's next week's episode. Right. Why, no, why we should have stopped listening to them in sixth grade, but I don't even know if I really listened to them in sixth grade. Well, well that's much when older. I was introduced to them and abandoned them. Was all well, right. I was I was aware of the sixth grade, but I wasn't like, you know, I didn't write away for the Kiss Army kit. I um I kit. sent away. You know that thing where you paid a penny and you got like ten records or yeah, 10 yeah, records yeah. Like Columbia House thing. Ripped them. Columbia House. That's it. no wonder they went out of business. Every kid in America ripped them off. I got like a cup, a bunch of Kiss albums for free or for a penny from from them. It was like Love Gun, Destroyer, maybe Rock and Roll Over. I can't remember either uh, that or, or how. It would all be the same period of time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. around sixth grade. I think that was yeah. 78, 77. Yeah, before that, remember. Alive 2 was it? came out in 77, I believe. Yeah. No, I was trying to remember when I was in sixth grade. Oh, I, don't, that, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but, you know, much, much like much like Star Wars yeah. and Evil Knievel and stuff, it's like you can see how it appeals, right? I mean, it's well, absolutely what what ten year old or nine year old kid way, wouldn't want to see fire breathing demons and spacemen and right, and then and then it's all the lore and, that came out of study hall. And, they were my comic yeah, but, book heroes back then. Yeah. But, so I, I actually listened. I, I made. I was just halfway through Dynasty when the podcast started, and I had to stop. But I made it all the way through. I, I had to skip. I had to skip the solo albums because time was. I was under. Well, the Ace crime. one's the only one that's worth. I made it through. I made it halfway through Ace Frehley's, and that's. And then I had to jump to Dynasty this evening, and I was like what the fuck just happened to these people? And then I started reading on Wikipedia. And that's, I was like, oh, that's what, that's what Ace happened. said. <laughs> that's what Ace said when, when they recorded Dynasty, or when other people recorded Dynasty for him. <laughs> Not a day today. <laughs> we build, build a little more yeah, up on the, on the intricacies. Uh, well, Peter Chris bailed on that too, I think. He donated two songs and then said, I can't play drums, my hands hurt. Yeah, he the, hadn't been. Yeah, yeah. Depending on who you believe, he hadn't been playing familiar. for for a while. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, so I know it turns out that you know when I was in, I started talking to you guys about it last week. But when I was in third grade, a friend of mine was total, total kiss head and tried to get me into it. And so, what does he play? Beth. 
I wasn't. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, it, and I was thinking, it's like, what the f- was I into at the time? And yeah, I, I like racked my brain. I was like, I was, I was into Queen. Uh, I was into Man for Man's Earth Band. <laughs> <laughs> I was into the Beatles. I was into Wings. Um, Queen was probably the heaviest thing that I had ever heard at that point. And he plays me Beth. And I would have been like, I, you know, I, I tried to do the same thing Danny did. I, I listened to everything up to Alive and Alive. And then I kind of like spotted through the next couple albums. I was like, fuck this. I know everything's on Kiss Alive too. Let me listen to that. I was like, you know, if I heard this whole thing in 1977, I probably would have been pretty into it. But instead, he played Beth for me. And then there was that whole <laughs> Phantom in the Park thing. Yeah. The, oh, oh, that was a... I, that but you know what? Again, movie. as a like 10, 11, 12, however old I was when that came out, I was glued to the screen yep, and loved every too. minute of it. Yeah. I, I, I remember watching That's part of it as a child and being like, this is the stupidest freaking thing i've ever i was just like why does he talk with this funny voice <laughs> well this was like over the weekend I, I listened to i don't know how many albums of theirs like that was the only music i listened to to the point where like i think i lost my mind a little bit yesterday afternoon and just had to like drive in silence for an hour but <laughs> they're like chameleons it's like they don't really like they'll do what what's going on like the first album sounds like the New York Dolls, just maybe sure. a, oh, yeah. a little bit heavier. It was like, oh, that's what they were going to do. And then they figured out that like, maybe that's petering off and we've got to kind of go like the hard rock kind of Kind of what route. they did for like the first three albums or so. Then their, their live album is kind of what, what hit for them. And then you're right. After that, they kind of, they got Bob Ezrin to produce Destroyer, which was a completely different, tone well, it's not them. just that but bob Ezrin co-wrote like most of like the the songs that we think sure. of as like the big kiss songs detroit rock city yeah yeah, yeah he, he was um, part of that shout it out loud and uh, uh what's his name kim uh fowley yeah did uh king of the nighttime world so yeah they definitely re- branched out with different songwriters and went for a kind of different feel on that album and and for me that I got into Kiss, it was around that time because um, I remember Rock and Roll Over had just come out, but I was younger, obviously. We're, my, my family was visiting some friends and they had uh, two older daughters that had the Kiss Alive album and they hated it. And they're like, you, you want this? I'm like, uh, it was the first time I had seen them. I looked at the cover, I'm like, yeah, mom, buy this for me, you know? So... <laughs> Got, we got it my brother and i she bought it for us and, and we really dug it and and i remember telling him like you know i was gonna take me to the store to get another album he's like get destroyer because he had like talked to other people and they were like that's the album they get and i i remember going to the record store they were out of stock on destroyer but but rock and roll over had just come out and that, that was the big you know like big colorful um cover and uh so i picked that up i remember getting home my brother's just like why did you get the one you know destroyer so <laughs> I, yeah. just, I i kind of got introduced to them but not with their music like the first thing i ever saw was just pictures of them like a friend oh, of mine had yeah. gone to the yeah me too rock rock, like the yeah. tour program and i was like oh my god like th- i remember my little like sixth grade brain exploding like this is like a horror movie like come to life on stage like this is gonna be fucking insane like and I, I built up the idea of what the music would be like so much in my head that when I listened to it, I was like completely confused. They, they don't best, sound they? like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they, just, they, just, they just do tired kind of love songs, you know, or just Nugent esque. You know, like yeah, you think about so many war, like love songs, them or hate them, just... but they sound like they look. And then you look at Kiss and you go, they don't sound like they look. See, I, I thought they did, they man. Did. Like God know. of Thunder and I, it's I, I don't know. Like to me, it I, just seems like sort of generic hard rock. Like it's all just ro- standard rock and roll riffs and time. Sure, and and, and the music. There's something to be said for that. I do agree. Um, thing but, is, 
is it's more than just the music with them. For example, what there you go, what 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 kid is not going to look at that and say, "Oh my freaking god, I don't care what they sound like. Look at that." Well, yeah, right. Can we talk I, about the look then? Because even the costumes. Yeah, like, yeah, let me let me share something here, guys. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Did they even talk to each other when they were coming up with? Amigo. Thank you for that one. <laughs> oh my god. You know, but, so you Bill got, has a point a because when, when 321 Contact was on, it was a show on PBS, and they had at least one especially. <laughs> I got Paul hanging around here too somewhere. I couldn't find him real quick, but they, yeah. They need to get their hair He's done. He's doing man. coconut. Yeah, yeah, they, these guys have been sitting in, at the bottom of a box for years. So yeah. With Coke snorting action. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hang on. I, I can't take this anymore. <laughs> hey, Charlie? Um, but the costumes, hey. like I don't understand the costumes either because like you got a cat you got yeah. an alien, so and then you got whatever the what is he's Paul not an Stanley alien supposed to be? What is he then? He's space a man. space voyager. He's a, you know space he's an man. astronaut. Nah, well you know he's like inside from his outer mind. space astronaut. Yeah, I, I mean I watched he's the VH1 alien. special, so I, I got <laughs> I got the down low on all this. <laughs> all right, he's a space traveler. How's that? Right, and so what like and then like so and then what is Paul Stanley? He's the star yeah. child. Yeah. Okay. We'll just I'll let you I'll let it. And then you got the G he's, Simmons, the demon. He's the like, demon. None of it is related to each other. They're all young the and archetypes. And the spaceman. They're what? So the let's take. Oh, I don't know. Let's take the Fantastic <laughs> Four, right? You got a big guy with rubbery arms and stretchy hands. You got an invisible woman. You got a dude who catches fire, and you got a big orange rock monster. How are they kind of connected? They're related. <laughs> that's really the married and brother and sister yeah I got your that. own teammate there <laughs> i think you're looking for a little guess, bit like, deeper I, meaning than <laughs> this I guess, you know I, I thought there would be like i and i i not that i thought there would be i was not surprised by kiss's look because i've seen it forever but it just it like it doesn't even if you put them all together, the only thing they have in common is face paint. They rock. But it all That's is what like they have in common. Like they right. like rock. So you're thinking more ideas. of like, like where Guar, they were all monsters and they came from the same planet to Earth to destroy Earth. They, had a they were all monsters. Yeah, like okay. Yeah, there was no, there was no. They backstory. sounded like they looked. They were. I mean, <laughs> yeah, they did. Yes, Guar does. Yeah. That's probably because somebody you know tried it out first and. You know, they saw where it didn't work and where it did work. And no, I mean, they come like on. They, 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 <laughs> they played their first show with paper mache costumes on and they freaking melted during the show and they were a hardcore back band back then. And <laughs> it was Death Piggy, right? Yeah, no, before, I mean, when they were gore, oh. after just being Death Piggy, the paper mache costumes totally fell apart during the show. Good, oh, yeah, well, they were on stuff. a budget. Yeah. And just remember the milk carton with the missing babe with the Can missing you see me? Yeah. They had a sense <laughs> of humor, didn't they? Yeah. One in a million. <laughs> Kiss would never do anything like that. Right. But yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> so, have you seen me practically? So here's my, my this take. This is probably why the kids are missing in the first place. <laughs> so Gurney and I were talking a little bit beforehand and he he made the comment he's like you know i i listened to to some of it now and it's like okay you know if you're into it great i got no problem with that kind of kind of thing but i i think i don't know what if there really was anything you would have gained danny by by binging like you did i mean i appreciate that you did that that's that's a headache pretty pretty hardcore but i don't think you're going to gain anything now with us being in our 50s if you hadn't been a fan and then going and, and listening to their entire body of work like that or, or most of it um it's like becoming I, a I trump supporter now 
<laughs> it's like a touchstone. <laughs> I just think for for me anyway, and I don't want to speak for Charlie, but like the whole thing is like it like what you see behind me as a kid seeing this sort of imagery and stuff like that, and the loud music, you know, whether yeah, it was amazing honest, and technical. Because back then I, I didn't judge it that way. And I had the first thing I heard like Grundy was Beth, and eh, might have you know turned me a little bit, but or sent me down the wrong path with them. But you know, hearing that and seeing it and the whole package together um was just i was i was all in right up until even through the solo albums the first solo album i bought was peter chris's and uh that was that was the first time i realized that something's not quite right with this and, and aces you know my brother i i got peter chris my brother got ace first and his i was like oh man and i ended up stealing his so um, ace fruitly is definitely like he is he's a good guitarist so I, I i don't think i ever really realized it but i really like like i like the songs he writes sometimes like i'll i'll listen yeah. to a riff and then i kind of look stuff up and it and it's like a, the majority of the time like if i heard like something that really caught my ear it was probably something he did like parasite is a great song yeah i love that yeah it's weird like the guitar riff is kind of weird and cool doesn't fit in like with that band in a lot of ways but it was a real it's a really cool riff yeah you know, you know it's I, interesting I you, you guys keep bringing up beth my as ears. your point of contact because that was my point of contact but i had a crush on beth cornaby oh at boy. the time and so <laughs> I was, Beth uh, Carnaby, if you're watching, please like. I was subscribe. sucked in. <laughs> <laughs> CW Featheroff at Yahoo.mail. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I would see it. I would you see can it read that. It was, like at, the, it was <laughs> at the drugstore to like in with the comics. And then it was, you know, uh, in National Lampoon, which I was sneaking from my brother. And I figured it, if it's in here and everything in National Lampoon is cool, like it's got to be cool right yep. <laughs> but then i just like lost interest in it it wasn't like you know a defining album that it's just i got into other stuff and then when they got back together i was like you know i think the guy I was living with or whatever uh we were listening to it all the time and i think it was adam and you know it just all came back and then it's just like stuck i guess you know because of mid middle age <laughs> <laughs> Bill, how old were you when you first saw them? When I first what? First saw it? I was no for Bill. How old was he when he first saw them in concert? I the first time I saw them was on their Lick It Up tour mm, um, yeah. at the Mid Hudson Civic Center, and then I saw them again. Yeah, right around there. Yep, and then uh, the following tour with I forget what the album was. Did Animal they do old stuff then? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that was the weird yep. thing about it then. Like, I, I could have seen them then, and I was like, well, they're just going to play this new stuff that I hate. No, they did. And that's when they were like trying to be an LA hair metal band. Yeah. Because they yeah. were all in like the span. Again, the going back prints. to your comment yeah. about being chameleons and changing to, to the time, I mean, the makeup thing had run its course, and, and I guess they, they kind of noticed that with album sales. But for what it, for what it was worth, they revitalized the career the ba and, and the band. By, by doing that and you know look it up and and a few of the albums after that that's right that, that was I, I was kind of done with them by I saw them the tour after that and that's kind of I was like yeah that's enough and then I saw them again years later with Grundy when they did the reunion tour in 94 or 5 somewhere around there but they were I mean by the time they they took the makeup off they were already on that path creatures of the night is totally like the California metal band and I think that's when Ace is still like credited, credited on the album, but Vinnie Vincent basically wrote yeah. most of that album and performed on most of that. Yeah. The um, Elder's really bad on the first side. I was expecting more out of it because some of my friends were like, oh, the Elder's like one of the, it was the greatest thing. And they were on, I don't know if you remember a show called Fridays that mm -hmm. was on like Fridays you would watch Fridays and Saturday night you would watch Don Christian's rock concert right, and right. Um, the midnight Gene, special Gene cries in the video of World Without Heroes 
they made like this little film. He's like, a world without heroes is no place to be. Oh, I was thinking, he like, didn't cry on Fridays. <laughs> running through a demon man. <laughs> If you look at the, I'm sorry, the buddy, you were, you were I, but 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 they played like three songs off the elder, and yeah. um, I was over at Will Dahl's house the night that that was on, and we were hanging out. And he's like, "Oh, look, Kiss!" I'm like, it was like, "Oh, this is actually like not Beth." <laughs> I think they were trying to mature at that point. You know, they were they were trying to. I it think was, they were doing it. Are we a metal band? Are we one of these Viking metal Well, they wanted bands? to have a concept album. It was the yeah. thing that they was had. It, they did. Was, oh, that's what I was going to ask. Was the Elder a concept album? It was yeah. supposed to be yeah. a concept, yeah, a concept album. They they reconnected with Bob Ezrin again, who had done Destroyer and had a lot of success. And I guess, yeah, that if you read about the history of that album, it was kind of a hot mess. Like, yeah. But again, it, I, you know, to what you're saying about the Ace songs, Ace has a song on there, Dark Light called it's an amazing song i actually <laughs> ripped that off for a dover boys song <laughs> that, <laughs> that <riff>. again <laughs> yep that one Statue was intentional limitation. <laughs> <laughs> and Gr grundy you would never know it's a song clean oh now i'm gonna have to go listen to that again and then listen to clean and yep and go like oh I think I listened to that music from the Elder like once. There were moments when I was listening to the albums from the 70s, you know, before Dynasty, that I was thinking to myself, like, some of this could actually use horns. Like, some of it is, like, so straight oh, yeah. on rock and roll that it's, like, if you if you threw horns in there, I don't think anybody would be shocked. Like, it's, it, they're like a rock and roll band. Like, it, there's times where there's just, I don't know if I'm making sense right now. Yeah. Kelly, Kelly from V Note used to call them uh, the best bar band in the world. You know, like mm. that they were just a bar band that with explosions. Yeah, I mean, at some <laughs> but, point, you know, it worked. First, and, and here we are talking about it, and it's you yeah. know whatever. The first album sounds like that they just left Brown Eyed Girl off the end of it. <laughs> I don't know about that. But okay. <laughs> I I was I, I listened to that one through and I was like shit, I should be taking notes because what the fuck was that song all about? There's a couple of times with oh, like the, the first three albums where I was just I like wait, what was that? Well, yeah, there are some weird but like that's oh. that's something Bill didn't I ask you once or did you know that um Double platinum is all remixed. It's all remixes. Yeah, sure. And I, and I think yeah. they re-recorded -re Strutter for that. Like, yeah, a, I think they an actual did different too, yeah. version. Yeah, yeah. Strutter I had heard as a kid that those live albums were all like re-recorded. Yeah, yeah. Basically, I mean, you think about it. Audience. It's like they're not standing in place playing like they're like you know shoegaze or something like that. Yeah, they're right. all over the place. Shit's I mean, exploding. Yeah, that There's was common. no way that you can. <laughs> It was a common thing back then. I, depending on who you believe, I had read that the only thing that actually survived from the live recordings was the were the drum tracks, and everything else was redone in the studio. Yeah. But even um, I saw an interview with Rob Halford recently, and their Unleashed in the East album, their their big live album from kind of that same time period. Um, musically, he had said that most, if not all, of it was live, but he actually retracted the uh, the vocals. In the studio for it. No, oh. you know I common. could see that because like you could, you could definitely have an off night as a singer, and, you know, especially his voice. Like it's got to be really, yeah, dialed yeah. in. I would imagine. I mean, listen to every live made in album with Ruth, Ruth Dickinson, even when they don't do overdubs. <laughs> it's like, oh, Bruce, you can't hit that note. You should never recorded that note. <laughs> I I was thinking when I was. When I when I got to a live, and like knowing that they had just like they had engineered the shit out of it and like redone the crowd noise and everything, and it, it kind of had that feel of like when I saw them live, it's like okay, I get that it's not like a, a live recording, but it, it's kind of got the feel. It captures a, the the live record, yeah. A live too, even more like that. I I would say like of all the crap that I listened to, I I kind of dug that album. It, it had it was it was up and down for sure. Ace must have been freaking high because his 
his song that he sung by himself it was just like he's not into this i can just hear it in his voice this is not like he tracks a song but but here's the thing i was thinking about it was to me it's kind of like the first couple of ramones albums i don't honestly i, I love the songs i don't like listening to the first couple of albums until, until like rocket to russia i don't really they sound like shit i can't stand them it must have been amazing at the time but a friend of mine had um you know the italian live album it's alive mm -hmm. and it was two discs it was all the greatest songs and it's fucking awesome because a it's live it's blistering but it also kind of like sounds the same and that's like one of the things you run into like you, they're like all over the map with the first three albums but then alive is like kind of together it's consistent yeah yeah and the, the, set the list weird, and the the weird thing was the, the two times I saw them, it was like verbatim, the banter, the set list, all of it. It was like, and the, the, the other thing was like, uh, you talking about Kiss Charlie? Yeah, yeah. The, and the okay. Kinks, the Kinks were like that too. Their live album, it was, I went to see them live and it was verbatim. The, hmm. you know, all the little stops, starts, everything, the set but list. That, that's everything. what's rehearsed. I mean, that's, you know, it's kind of yeah, I know, but it's sort of it's not you know some shitty punk rock band called the Regans playing at the bar. You know, <laughs> we just kind of make it up as we go along. <laughs> and, you know, honestly, every band that we've ever been in, Whoa. like yeah, you know why you know why there's Whitney Banner. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, come on, you're you're getting paid millions. You could come up with something better than all right, right? Insert <laughs> all right, insert. In insert city here <laughs> it's like a mad lib new city <laughs> oh well yeah i mean well you know so it sounds like you guys came over to our side just a tiny bit well, well i'll give you some can i tell you this i thought every song is a little slower than it should be a lot slower than it should be it's just a little, all of it is like just a little too slow. Like that's, that's why we should cover one and show them how it's done. What are my favorite album was Dress to Kill, <laughs> which I don't think anybody really talks about much, but I thought Dress to Kill was a decent album. I thought that's where they were actually finding themselves. The first yeah. album is a lot like the New York Dolls. And then I thought Dress to Kill, which is the second album is like, that's them trying to like figure out who they are, what their music I, is like. And I really like that album, except for, I think that the, uh, the song is Going Blind. <laughs> that, that's, that on, that's on Hotter Than Hell. Oh, it's on Hotter Than Hell. I can't yeah. tell with my notes. I wasn't sure where it yep. was. That's a really fucked wow, up song. You're, you're I diligent. Googled it. I was like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, there's a story that's behind that. That's due diligence. <laughs> yeah, there is. It's not, like, you didn't happen to write down the tabs, though, did you? Uh, while you <laughs> I, I tell you that being a little bit too slow is interesting because listening to the the, um, the studio version of God of Thunder, I'm like, this song is awful. It's yeah. It's, and then it hit the Alive Two version. It's like, oh, no, this is actually pretty good once they play it fast enough. And they got rid of all that. And that's where I really sense. noticed it on the live albums was that's when I noticed it. I was like, wait a second. Like the live version, it just, yeah, it was like, everything's a little faster live all, all the time. I mean, yeah. unless you're like Madonna playing to a click track or something, but for the most part with bands, everything's a little faster live because the adrenaline and everything else. And you could, it, it just needed like a little bit faster. And most of those studio songs would be, I think much different songs. I don't know. Sure, I, I I agree. I think some of my favorite Kiss songs are covers, like other bands that covered Kiss. Uh huh. <laughs> so like when I think of um, uh, Black Diamond, mm. I think of the Replacements version. When it's I think of um, uh, Strutter, it's um, <clears throat> was it Strutter? Yeah, I think so. Off um, four bands who, who would change the world. They had like. Oh, yeah. Uh, FOD and. Yeah. And I don't remember which one AOD. covered it. AOD, White Flag. 
Yeah, F and something. Uh, but it you know, seems like a white flag tribute album. Zoom is crashing. I don't know. If... Just covering "Hotter Than Hell," like they redid that whole album with covers. Who did? It's a tribute album for "Hotter oh, Than." Because White Hell. Zombie did "Destroyer," I think. Yeah, I stumbled upon it in my YouTube searches for their albums, and I when I got to "Hotter Than Hell," I think it's "Hotter Than Hell." No, I'm sorry. I think it's "Rock and Roll Over." Now that I think about it. Um, I ended up pulling up the wrong version. It was the tribute version first. Hmm. Well, then there's the Melvins That's tribute. The Kiss fans. Where they did what Bill's got behind him. They had solo albums. They got. Oh, did they? Yeah, they looked just like that. Why did they do those four where solo albums? Where did Bill albums? go? Is he frozen? I thought he was just frozen. I thought he was just looking on it at us with disdain. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. It's never changed. Well, well, now Bill can actually drawing. see what Bill looks. Keep like. talking. Just keep talking. <laughs> what the hell's going on here? <laughs> Man. Oh, there he is. Now we got two. Bill goals. is disdaining Bill. <laughs> <laughs> he is displeased. He is not happy. <laughs> I tried changing my background image again. I found I the, the, in judgment. the Sloppy Seconds album cover that they did. Mm -hmm. uh, if you guys know the band Sloppy Seconds. Yeah, I know the band. I don't know the cover. Though. Yeah, they, they did an album called Destroyed, and it's the four of them kind of trying to recreate the oh, yeah. cover of Destroyer. But yeah. Well, Teeny Boppers, I say we do Black Diamond, but you know. Which album was that on? Because I feel first, like I should have heard first, it some first, point. first album. I think it was the last oh, song, okay. right? Uh, yeah. So right before I dropped off, you guys were talking about other bands that covered Kiss. Um, there was, I'm sure Kiss has done more covers, but Ace did a, uh, well, on the album Dynasty, they did a cover of the Rolling Stones, 2000 Man, which I think yes. is a great cover. Oh my God, it's awful. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I thought you were going to say that. <laughs> oh, gosh. I didn't know it was a cover, and I'm listening to it just a little while ago. I'm like, what the fuck is this, man? This is the stupidest song. Like, what I'm, the I'm, I got to say that um, Will played that for me back in the day, and he was like, how about this? And I was just like, oh, what the? F <laughs> He's like, it's a Rolling Stones <laughs> cover. It's like, they wrote shitty songs too, man. <laughs> What Stones album is that on? No, Jesus. It looks like the Mendes. It's on her, Ma her Majesty's. Oh, cover, okay. I think. I don't know. I would go look it up, but it seems every time I alt tab out of Zoom, it, it uh, kaboom. Did you know you can use your cursor? I don't know if it's recording this, but you can use your cursor and stick it up your nose, the little finger. It, it doesn't record that. <laughs> I, I don't think. Oh, yeah. kiss covered, and then he kissed me. But she, uh, I, I she, vaguely she remember that. Yes. On Love God, that yes. That is bloody awful. It, that oh is bloody God. awful, yeah. <laughs> well, you I'm know, you they're there. not all. They're, they're not, not all greatest there. hits. That's true. I mean, look, if you're going to do an album a year for the, for the entire decade, pretty much, like, yeah, I guess, you know, there's going to be what? some turds in there. <laughs> So, D Danny, did you get to side four of Alive 2? I listened to the whole, I think I listened to all of Alive 2. Okay, it was the, a very the, long album. The first three sides were, were the concert, and then side four were, were some extra, like, new studio tracks. Oh, I don't know. I think, I I think just, there's you know, a I was cover. Just stuff off of YouTube. Yeah, the, the, the last song is a cover, and then um, it's got the, uh, the Ace song, Rocket something. Rocket Ride. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, Great tune. Which was the second single they released off that album. The first one was a live version of Shout It Out Loud because I was sitting on the Wikipedia page earlier while I was listening to the dang album going, who the hell is singing now? And what is up with Gene Simmons going with his like, was he listening to Molly Hatchet a lot at that point? Because he kept doing this, 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 this thing. And I was just like, this is not what he said in like in the other albums. 
<laughs> so one thing I noticed, we have not been talking other than that brief moment when you asked me when I, I first saw them. We have not talked about any of the albums from when they took the makeup off, like from Lick It Up. I, 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 uh, I didn't get that part. I dismissed them. I was done. Yeah, I mean, like... I had moved I, on. I know Lick It Up and I, th I think it was Animalize, I think was the next one came yeah. out when I was still in high school and I had those albums and saw them Animal on those tours. The one that's like kind of purple and aren't like, and that's Creatures of the Night. That's Creatures, Creatures of the yeah. yeah. yeah Animal Eyes yeah. has got like the tiger stripes or something on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And that's Eric Carr, right? Well, Eric, Eric Carr's a fucking monster. Eric's first album was The Elder. Yeah. And he yeah. toured with Unmasked. Yeah. The year before that, yeah. That was the big scandal. Also Gene and when uh, Cher left, who did she leave? Greg, Greg Allman? Allman? Yeah. For for Gene Simmons? Or was yeah. it the other way around? I, think I just remember right. the pictures in the paper where he's wearing like a mask. How did they get through the entire decade of the 70s without any photos of them? There was no internet. That's kind of <laughs> yeah, that's it is considering because now all now, the photos that have come photos. out yeah exactly yeah. all the photos have come out since of them without their makeup it is kind of amazing that they were able to keep that that facade up for that long yeah but. yeah it's it's pretty incredible Especially and now you can't even go to vacation in uh you know mexico without getting called out <laughs> somebody's gonna see you and take take your take your picture and then you got to come back and apologize and go hand out water and stuff i don't know anyway i digress yeah. yeah it just reminded me of the time I saw Willem Dafoe on Broadway and I was he was walking down the other way you know he was coming towards me speaking of recognizing people and I was like wow that junkie looks just like Willem Dafoe oh wait a minute <laughs> <laughs> so how are we doing on time Mr. Uh, Grundy uh, oh we're probably about um 40 minutes in on this well have we have we beat this horse enough i think i have one yeah, final you, you, you kind of get where we're coming from we certainly get where you're coming from too i i, I don't disagree that i probably should have started stopped listening to them and no, i don't um, either it's great but you know i think that's that's really the question that i have is like how often do you flip them on um rarely if in I'm the car it, yeah, in the car, if I'm making a playlist for a road trip or something, I'll throw mostly Ace, pick Ace songs on there. To be honest with you. <laughs> I, I was thinking about that in, in terms of like bands that I that were like kind of foundational and like maybe Queen is probably the only one that like I will flip stuff on and I'm very selective. And a lot of times it's like I'll listen to live stuff that I've never heard before. Mm -hmm. um i rarely pull up pull like a studio lp out and listen to it I'm trying to think after kiss i got heavy into basically raiding my brother's album collection and like heavy into judas priest um acdc he wasn't much in acdc but I, I, that's kind of when i discovered them right after after kiss and those bands that well more acdc i still pull out let there be rock and power age and and highway to hell and whatever even now I, I think from the, the the point from for me it was like 1979 <clears throat> when um i got introduced to led zeppelin blue oyster cult and then in seventh grade somebody passed me a copy of dead kennedy's bootleg called skate party and it was just like it was all over at that point it was dead kennedy's iron maiden and then you know when i met you guys <laughs> yeah right So do we want to do our uh, our rapid fire round table question of the week? Oh, I don't have yeah. one, but I'll make one up. Yeah, I don't I'll have one. one I was going to make one up. <laughs> Grundy, why don't you uh, go for who, who are you? I have one holstered, but I don't know if I want to use it yet. We can go, well. well who's, uh, who's asking who? I asked who? Grundy last week, though. Yeah, I asked, I asked uh, Grundy. you last week. I asked, you asked Charlie Bill, last right? week. Yeah, Charlie asked me. So, Danny, you start. Ask somebody a question. It doesn't matter who. Okay. I'm just looking for my, here it is. 
I'm going to save my my good bill question for when we do the Dio episode. So uh, this one's a fallback measure. What is the first song you can remember ever hearing in your life, and how old do you think you are? Is this to everybody? No, it's to you, Bill. Oh, to me. Yeah, I don't wow. know. I had to pick somebody, right? I forgot to tell you. No, no, I that's fine. You. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Gosh, I kind of, I don't know who it was by, but I remember having this 45, it was a song called Beep Beep. It was like a novelty song. <laughs> no, I. About like a Nash Rambler yeah, or something. I love that song. And, and, and it started out really slow. And as it went up, it was about a car, like some somebody driving a car and, and their brakes were stuck or, or oh, broken I mean, or something the guy goes and past it gets faster, and it's like how do faster, i get this out of the second faster. gear yeah yeah yeah, yeah. That, that one I, that one it was the first thing that came to my mind when when you asked that and it's kind of we're digging way back into that so i think that might be it how old do you think you are five i don't know okay good enough interesting interesting I got nothing. Yeah, I got. I got to think. So somebody else ask ask somebody else. Uh, all right. Um, well, I have to ask either Grundy or Danny. Uh, hmm. Who are you picking? I don't know. Isn't this entertaining, folks? <laughs> <laughs> Professional well, podcast. I'll you, I'll you, while you think, while you're thinking, you one last kiss observation. I thought they should have had a singer. I thought they should have had a front man. But I think the band is like three front men and a drummer. So I think they would have had a hard time hiring a singer, but I think they could have benefited from it. I don't really see Paul Stanley as a front man. Is, Paul Stanley is weak as a singer. Paul yeah, Stanley maybe, you know, always sounds like he's singing, like the recording slowed down. I kind of like his voice now. Because you don't get a lot of people with that I don't, thick. Alto. I just wasn't a fan of it. Like I just, it didn't have like any... It's kind of soft. Like it doesn't have any growl to it, I guess I would say. It's, like even though he tries to like well, sure. do that growl, those like growly sex noises or what I don't know what the fuck they are that he <laughs> makes these weird noises in between songs sometimes. But um, yeah, I just I I thought they for the music they were playing, they should have probably gotten a singer. I disagree. I think anybody I think thought of a question? I I well yeah, I got one, one. one quick follow up on that though. Maybe if, Dino if you don't Bill. Mind. Sure. Real quick is they did it. In fact, have three front men early on, but Ace wasn't one of them. I think Peter, because Peter sang a bunch of songs, oh, like he right. sang Black yeah. Diamond and and uh, or and other stuff. I, I, it's a to me now. Well, okay, Beth. And, and uh, uh, oh, uh, hard, hard luck, luck woman. woman. Yep. Yep. And you're right. Garth, Garth Brooks reading, covered Hard Luck Woman, which is actually a pretty damn good cover. <laughs> My daughter pretty awful when song. I sing it in the car. That that was one of those songs where I was just like, "What the it hell was, is this?" It was the follow-up to that, basically. When Ace did release comments, did he have a singer in the band, or did he sing? Who's that? When Ace did Freely's comments, did he sing? Or it was him, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Then, yeah. He had gotten over the the stage fright or whatever it was. Well, I doesn't think. he sing like? Uh... He sings "Shock Me." I think was the first one he did. Yeah. Yeah, I remember reading it. about it, how he would write the songs and they'd want him to sing. And he'd be like, no, 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 I, I, mean, I can't sing. Like he kind of hated his voice or something. Okay, I got a question for um, Dan. What okay. Kiss song should we cover? <laughs> You've listened to all of them. No, this you is an absolute honest answer. <laughs> I, th I think we should actually cover that one song they do that went, I want to hear it loud right beat i love it loud yeah <laughs> there you go that's my kiss song either okay. that or lick it up come on man Can we cover that with the good stuff not black <laughs> yeah. diamond or maybe i was made for loving you <laughs> anything uh, three, i would charlie. do that Pick one. i would love to hear charlie <laughs> sing that one <laughs> i was made for loving you baby that's it, you, you wonder sometimes it's like could could somebody take that and turn it into a good song? I don't know. I, don't I mean, know. we took I Lick It Up and we turned never. it into a scorcher. I, it wasn't necessarily a good song, in but the, it was fast. Well, I'll send you a, a video I have of a guy learning the bass line to Lick It Up. And it's basically just... It's A. Da, 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 yeah. Da, 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 yeah. 
did, did. Yeah. Danny. So yeah, yeah sure. Bill. <laughs> Question for you. I know you're getting you're getting two questions, but this is one I was thinking okay. of earlier. How old were you when you started playing guitar and what was your first guitar? Oh yes. Um I was I think it was this I was on summer vacation. I think I was 15 or 16. I can't remember which one now. And my brother had tried to play guitar a couple of years before me and gave up and threw the guitar in the attic. And it was just this acoustic guitar. It was um but it was a classical guitar with nylon strings and the terrible mm -hmm. action and the whole deal. And I was just bored in the summertime and I wandered up in my attic because I could find like cool shit up there sometimes and uh, grabbed the guitar and just started plucking at it and then went to the library, got a book and then just started playing. Nice. I'm a prodigy. No. I <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, it. was probably like 15, 16 and it was like some shitty classical guitar. Cool. Michael rode the boat ashore. My first song I learned. Ah. Over that. It was in Mel Bay's guitar book. <laughs> <laughs> I got one for Charlie. Okay. Kiss called. You're going on the Kiss Cruise this year, but you have to come up with your own character. What thing do you paint on your face? <laughs> oh, oh my God. Uh... Chicken man. <laughs> I don't know. One of those like pork hands. <laughs> Star Child, the demon, base palm. The orc. <laughs> <laughs> you, I saw dead, not to change the subject, but I saw a dead Kennedy's thing today, like new dead Kennedy's, or I guess with the new singer. His name's Jerry Ramone. Who the hell is that? And then they flash know. like the Ramon logo for a second. And he's terrible. Jerry Ramon. Jerry Ramon. I knew. Uh, but I thought they, I, didn't they have um, the guy from Dr. No? Yeah, they I did. Guess, but yeah. I guess they don't. Oh, okay. I guess he got but it's just the Jerry's question is. reminded me of it because he said kiss called. And I, I responded to the video like, this is the best guy you could get. Like, I'm better than that guy. <laughs> no, no He's Bay Ray called. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing next week? I would do that. Like... <laughs> That's a topic for another. If if like one of your heroes called and was like, hey man, you want to be in the band? Except yes. we're doing, you know, we're doing like uh lounge act. Instead. Doing something embarrassing. <laughs> we're doing, we're doing, doing, we're doing yeah. jazz odyssey. We're finally doing jazz odyssey. We're doing light rock interpretations of all our our hits. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a tough choice. What's all that, right, Bill. Oh, that's more Simmons. Okay. Oh, let's wrap it up. This Don't hang up, Danny. <laughs> I won't this time, but I want to show you if Ace Frehley was really going to be this the spaceman, that's what he should look like. <laughs> that's that's Vinny Vince. That's his makeup. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was is Vinny Vince? Vince? Is he like the Oc, Egyptian? Oc man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Egyptian. Oc, something like that. Yeah. All right. Fuck it. I'm turning the recording off. All right. Bye. 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 I'm not Bye. saying goodbye. All right, I'm not saying goodbye. We just turned the recording off. <laughs> I'm afraid to say goodbye. You guys sure you're done? <laughs>